And on top of this, if you would please write the word very good. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> And then write this down, please. When we talk about exponents, ladies and gentlemen, exponents are these little guys that we sometimes write above and to the right of a number. That is the exponent. And sometimes we just call it a power. Either way, it's the same thing, exponent or power. The big number that sits right here, we call the base number. Not very often, we don't. And you need to pay very close attention because fifth graders make some common mistakes that we don't want to do. Yes. And here is what you need to write down for exponents. Okay. This is going to get you through in life here. The exponent tells you how many bases get multiplied together. And please, if you would highlight that, put it in the ever popular bubbles or the cloud or whatever it is. I will tell you the common mistake you will do. Half of you will still do it, even though I'll tell you not to do it. But that's just the way it is when you're fifth grade. What five to the second power is is this? If you have five to the second power. That means this 2 tells you how many of these 5's get multiplied together. 2 5's get multiplied together. 5 times 5 is 25. So 5 squared equals 25. Now I'll tell you what it is not, boys and girls, it is not 5 times 2, which is what I get a lot of people to tell me the answer. If I wanted 5 times 2, I would write 5 times 2. This is 5 squared, 5 to the second power. That is 25. Just like 5 to the third power is not 15. It's not 3 times 5. It's 3 fives times themselves. And what you'll notice about exponents, as they get bigger, the problems get kind of a lot tougher because 5 times 5 times 5 you could do 5 times 5 in your head because that's one of our math facts, but 5 times 5 times 5 is, 5 times 5 is 25, times another 5 is 125. This is apparently not the way Kelly would look, because she's looking a little dazed and confused. Just like this. Now here, watch this. 5 to the 4th power. 5 to the 4th power is not 20. It's not 5 times 4. It is four fives times themselves. And that is, again, not an easy thing to do. I'll do it. And they probably won't give you this big number, but I'm just going to do it for you. Five times five is 25. 25 times five, we already did right here, is 125. And 125 times five, anybody? 625. Again, you don't have to know that, but just look at that. And then just for fun, just for fun, we're going to do 5 to the 5th power. Oh, yeah. no, 5 to the 5th power is not 25. It's not 5 times 5. It's 5 fives times themselves. Wish I would have done that a little better. Which 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 was 125. 125 times this 5 was 625, 
Now I have to do it one more time. 625 times 5. Frank is going to tell me. 3,125. And I won't do it, but if we did go 5 to the 6th power, that's going to be in the 15,000 range, right? Max. You're supposed to head out. Did Max already go? No, he's right there. Go, Max. Go, Max. 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 Run like your life depends on it. But it doesn't really. It doesn't Run like your life depends on it. We just know it doesn't really And then, ladies and gentlemen, 5 to the 6th power would be 15,000. If you went 5 to the 7th power, then you're in like the $75,000 range. If if you ever, ever hear the phrase exponential growth, This is just, you don't even have to write this in your notes. Exponential growth means this. If you look at, well, let's look at the number 2. 2 to the second power is just 4. That's not a very big number, is it? 2 to the third power would be what? 4 times 2, which is 8. 2 to the fourth power would be, multiply that by 2, 16. 2 to the 5th power would be 16 times 2. Exponential growth means this, that as your exponents keep increasing, the numbers get, they, they grow slowly at first because from 4 to 8 is not very big. But from 8 to 16 gets to be a little bigger. 16 to 32 gets kind of bigger. You know, if I had you guess what 2 to the, let's say 2 to the 10th power was. If you had to guess what 2 to the 10th power is, what would you say, Colin? 200. 200. I'm going to say you're way too low. Because that means this. Watch. 2 to the 10th power. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now remember, your number is doubling every time. 2 times 2 is 4. 4. 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024 would be 2 to the 10th power. Numbers get big really fast as you keep doubling them. And that is exponential growth. And then we have to write this down. Jot this down. We have special names for these numbers. Like when I wrote down 5 to the 2nd power, if it's a second power, instead of usually calling it 5 to the second power, we call it 5 squared. Okay. 7 squared would be 49. 49. 9 squared. Trev? 81. 81. If something is to the third power, anybody? Third power has a special name, we call that cube. So, two cubed is, don't say six, two times two is four, times two is eight. Three cubed is, three times three times three, Victoria? Wait, nine, three, six. Nine times, three times three, here, let's do it. Three times three times three. Three times three is nine. nine Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Four to the third power. Now watch how big these numbers start getting here. Four times four is 16, times another four is 64. We already did five cubed, by the way. Five times five times five is 125. What would 9 cubed be? It's not, not 27. It's 9 times 9 times 9. Do that one in your head. Trevor? 729. There you go, 729. Exponents get really big all by a lot. Now, we went back to that thing I said 
you know, two, this is squared, two to the third power, that's cubed. If it's anything other than that, you just call it two to the fourth power, two to the fifth power, two to the sixth power, two to the seventh power. Only squared and cubed are the only ones you really, really have special names for. Oh. And then, unfortunately, we've got to do one more thing. Take out a blank piece of paper. And right on top of it, square roots. Square roots are like the opposite of powers. And by the way, you'll like this. This symbol right here is not the division box. That thing right there, I know you've heard this term before, you probably wondered where it came from. That symbol is called the radical sign. And it's got like that little squiggle thing, kind of like that part of the is It is not division, and you don't do division to find square roots. Okay, square roots ask you this question. That radical sign, the radical sign asks you what number times itself gives you, now I have to tell you what this number is called. In math, we call this number here, you're not going to like this. It's called the radicand. The radicand. And I don't know how there's another name for it, so I gotta use it. Gives you the radican. That's the question you're answering. I will do that over here just for fun. To find out what the square root of 64 is, you ask yourself what same number times itself gives you 64? What same number times itself gives you 64? Colin? 8. 8. So that's what the answer is. It's just a single 8. It's not two 8s. It's just one single 8. And the one thing you realize, ladies and gentlemen, is there's only a certain amount of square roots that actually work out nicely for us. I suppose we could list those there. Um, I wish I wouldn't have used my whole board for this. I can go up, I guess. For example, um, we have the square root of 1. What number times itself gives you 1? The square root of 2, what number times itself gives you 2? No, 1 times 1 is 1, thank you. 2 times 2 is 4. What? 1 and 4? It doesn't have 1. Colin kind of hit it. There is an answer to this, but it's not a nice, easy whole number. Okay, so that they won't ask you it, but there is no square root of 2. There is no square root of 3 for right now. The next one we get to is the square root of 4, because 2 times 2 is 4. What would be the next square root that actually works out? There's no square root of 5, there's no square root of 6, no square root of 7, or square root of 8. There is no square root of 6. What times what gives you 6? Oh, it's got to be the same number, though. Yeah. 3 times 3 is not 6. So the next one you come to is, Nathan? 9. 9. Square root of 9 is 3. What would be the next square root that works out, Colin? Uh, 
Well, think about that this is 4. The next one would be what 4 times 4 is. 16. Yeah, the square root of 16 is 4. Square root of what would be the next one that actually works out? Thank you very much. 25, which is 5. Then the next one that works out is? Add again. Yeah, 36. So those are the ones that work out. And if you look at, there's more that don't work out than do work out. But on a good note, though, if I did give you the square root of 17, you could give me a pretty good guess what it's close to. Okay, because the square root of 17 is going to be awful close to the square root of 16. You know it's between the square root of 16 and the square root of 25, so you know 17 has to be, if you were guessing or estimating, Andrew, it would be... Four and a half. Well, four and a half would be a little big. It's four plus a little bit. But you know, at least, you would know if I gave you the square root of 17 dollars that you'd have a little more than four dollars. You can get a pretty good guess for that. All right. Just like if I said, okay, if I gave you the square root of 85, and I said, estimate or guess what that answer would be. What number would be awful close to the square root of 85? Colton? 81. Right, which is what? What is the square root of 81? 9. So you know it's going to be close to 9. But it won't be any sad. Yeah. And as a little side note, you don't have to write this down now, but if I did give you something like the square root of 5, in math, we call the square root of 5 an irrational number. Because it doesn't make sense, because if you type the square root of 5 into a, even a calculator, and you're saying, hey, show me that. Hey, show me that. Show me that. Yeah. If I type the square root of 5 in my calculator, I'm oh, sorry. Let's get out of there. Clear. If I take the square root of 5, I don't know if I can blow this up or not. Okay, it gives you the square root of 5 in a calculator gives you 2.23606797499779. And it only stops there because the calculator doesn't have any more digits to do. If you tried to do this out and asked the math guy to do it, it would be a decimal number that never, ever, 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 ever ends. Would it be like five? It would be like five. Yes, Siri. <laughs> you could ask Siri, but Siri will tell you this, and it'll say that's a point like getting close. It's not really this? <laughs> so we call it irrational because it, we call it irrational because it doesn't make sense because it never ends as a decimal. People have tried. So, you can do you can. Victoria. Wouldn't it just say two and a half? Well, we'll guess and we'll get it close, but we can't get exact. You, think you, can, you won't get exact other than the square root of two. So, on, in your book and in your notes, let me give you a couple examples just so you know if you run across them. They will give you something like this. Compare the square root of 36 to... Uh, 3 squared. If that happens in your book, yes, you will write both of those down. You'll write the problem just like it is. Then you'll actually do that. What is the square root of 36? 6. 6. What is 3 squared? 9. nine. And then which one is bigger? Nine. This is what I would need to see on the homework paper. Don't cut corners and just write 6 and 9. Um, or maybe they'll give you this. What is the square root of 25 minus the square root of 16? Square root of 25? Five. Addison is? Five. No, square root of 16, Addison is? Four. And 5 minus 4 then would be 1. Do I need to see that show your work? Don't cut all those corners. Oh, no. Oh, no. Now, this could work out well for you or not. Go to your notes under expanded form. Okay. 
We do have notes under expanded form or expanded notation, maybe. I'm not sure what you mean. Oh, yeah, expanded. I've never written this. Oh, I don't have expanded. I actually just And somewhere on the bottom, write this down. Right? Four million five hundred thousand. I know all the while we were talking about this, you probably were saying to yourself, what good does this whole exponent thing do? Well, good, Mr. Hodge. What good does this whole exponent thing do? All right. Something to understand and know is this. Write these down on the side here because this will help you. Um, 10 to the first power, and we never talked about this, but anything to the first power is itself. Okay? 10 to the second power, maybe you can figure out 10 times 10 is. 10 to the third power, what is 100 times 10? 1,000. How about 10 to the fourth power? Maybe you can see a pattern going here. By the way, look, 1, 10, 000, 1, 10, 2, 000. 2, 3, 3, 10,000. 10 to the fifth power. 100,000. Look at you kids. You are smarter than Okay. Knowing this, knowing this little fact right here, if you're asked to write an expanded notation using exponents, if we weren't using exponents, we would have to write this. Remember, it's four times what? A million? That's, that's what the 4 million stands for, and to that I would be adding 5 times what? 100,000. 100,000. This is how we did it up until this point. Yes. But rather than you wasting all your time writing all of those ones with all those zeros, they're asking you to use exponents, which would mean this. I guess we didn't get to a million, did we? A million is what? Let's go down one more. 10 to the 6th power is 1 million. Because it's 1 with 6 zeros after it. So instead of writing 1 million here, you are going to write 4 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6th power. Because that 10 to the 6th power is the same thing as a million. And instead of writing 5 to times times 100,000, I'm going to write 5 times 10 to the what power? Six. How many zeros come after the 1? Five. Five. 5. So this is how, if they ask you to write it using exponents, you're going to use this instead of writing all those zeros out there. You're saying, let's do another one. Let's do another one. Let's do it. We need to nourish our brains today. <laughs> so look at this one here. If I'm writing this in expanded notation, you know it's going to be 6 times 10 to some power. What power will be above that thing there, Brian? Um... And you don't have to, all you have to do is really think about how many digits come after the 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Because that's what the exponent will be, because it would have been one to, with five zeros after it. And then the next one would be five times ten to what power? Four. How many digits come after it? Four. And then the next one would be plus three times ten to the. Yeah, three digits come after it. However many digits come after the number is the exponent that you'll put with the 10. Let's try Uno Mas. 7, 8, 0, 0, 2. Zero, zero, zero. That one looks complicated. Yes. What's going to be in my first parentheses? What will it be? What will it be? Marilyn. 
What am I going to put for the 7? I'm going to write 7 times 10 to what power? How many digits come after the 7? How many digits come after the 7s? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's times 10 to the 7. What's going to be in my next parenthesis? Sam, what's going to be in my next parenthesis? Eight. Times 10 to the, oh. how many six digits six. come after the 8? What? Eight. Six. Six, because there's six digits after the 8. What's going to be in my last parenthesis? Brooklyn? Two times 10. Yeah, you're right so far, 2 times 10. It's always going to be times 10 to what power? 3. Three. It's just a lot simpler than writing all of those ones with all of those zeros in there. One more, just because. Okay. Let's see if you got it. We'll go super big. Yes. Yeah. Seven four five zero six three nine zero zero four zero 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 zero. All of them are going to be in parentheses times 10. 7 times 10 is something, 5 times 10 is something, 6 times 10 is something, 3 times 10 is something, 9 times 10 is something, and 4 times 10 is something. Oh, wow. It's really just really. Yes, fake mate habit. Just a lot of counting there. That's what I want to do. By the way, that's why we put commas in numbers so you don't have to sit there and count things a lot. Every group of three is a comma, so it should be pretty simple. Tyler Hopkins, what is in your first parenthesis? Uh, six times Wait, ten. Isn't it a seven? Seven times, times ten to the fourteen. I don't know. Let's go three, six, nine, twelve. Yeah, look at you, fourteen. I like it. In my next parenthesis would go Jordan Shaw. Um, five times ten to the twelve. Is that right? One, yeah. two, three, four, twelve. By the way, imagine if you had to write all those zeros. In my next parenthesis will go Ellie Fox. Um, six times ten. To the ten. Yeah, to the tenth power. In my next parenthesis would go Marilyn. Three times ten to the what? Nine. 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 Plus uh, Allie. Um, nine times ten to the. We did just come after the nine. Um, eight. Ten to the eight. And last but certainly not least will be anybody?